Yo, yo. What up? What up? Yo. What up? What up? Hey. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Benny's crib. What up? Oh, uh, yeah, just leave your shoes over there. It's cool. Yeah, thanks. Does that sound cool? Yo. Yo, what up? Welcome to Benny's crib. Beautiful people, we are live. I'm in Portland, Maine. I believe my guest is in Lewiston tonight. And we are uh, here with another great episode of Benny's Crib. You know what it is, highlighting stories in Maine, hip hop, R&B, electronic. But tonight we got an MC, someone who reps FM Records. We've talked to Lab Ralphie before, who also reps FM Records. But now tonight we got Doc Lowe in the building. How are you, my friend? I'm good, how you doing, Benny? I'm feeling Everything's well. everything. Yeah, man, we feeling very, very good. Getting my questions tip top shape. Um, yeah, we have uh, an artist who has said reps Lewiston. Is that correct? Lewiston, Auburn, you know, LA, 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 LA you correct. know, Dirty Lou, whatever they want to call it, you know, <laughs> the, the Lou, the Lou. Tremendous. Well, uh, as I said, you've been mentioned before on the podcast. Um, I think the project is called The Amityville. It's an EP that you dropped. Yeah, that's The Amityville. Yep last year and uh we we put out another project right after but we pulled it back you know situations you know yeah that happens i mean it's nothing, a, nothing you know part of the game but um but yeah the amityville that was a project we created me and lab based off of basically where we at and also maine you know because mm. it's in maine mm. and it's one of those projects we put a little past present and we went for it you know I love it. I love it. Well, we're going to get to that for sure among many of the stories in the Doc Lowe uh, Chronicles. But the first question I really like to ask everybody starts back in the early part of your life. Um, and that is, what is your first memory of hip hop? Uh, my first memory of hip hop. That's a good one. Back when I was probably like 11 or 12. And you got to think, I'm going to give you my age and I don't like to because people think I'm younger. I'm 45. There we go. Now I'm still young. So back in the day, Back in the day, it was uh, a friend of mine, he came from California. And, and I'm from Alabama, see, I'm, I'm not from Maine. I'm bottom grown, but I'm Maine raised. <laughs> so Maine's my home, Alabama's where I'm from. Gotcha. So my first encounter was a guy from Cali. He came with records and it was NWA and Ice-T and I'm down South and it's a whole two live crew type of movement. Yeah. And, um, that was my first real encounter of, damn, this is this is what music sound like, not just what I, yeah. So that was one of my first encounters. That's when I knew I liked music. That's a great. I was memory. like, damn, different genres. Yeah, because you know it's not. like- I got vivid memories. Oh, I love it. That's a perfect place to be then, because we're gonna definitely recount some. But um, that's a special era to get into hip hop too, because you know getting to experience West Coast records. And the South, I imagine, isn't as easy as it is now to just go on Spotify and type in like whatever you want. Like, not everybody, you know, in your circle probably had those records. So it must have been a pretty special. Ah, no, no one had them, and they didn't even reach the South until like a year later. So I was like, ah. Oh. So I had the South, then I had the West, and then the North was ringing because you had the LL, the you know the. Uh, back then it was Big Daddy Kane. Uh, Rock, it was a list of the artists that saved, uh, set the platform. Rock M, oh, you oh, know, wow. EPMD, certain artists. Hell yeah. But um, yeah. once I heard, uh, I'm gonna say LL really was the one that really made me like, damn, this is, this music is something different. Hell he was wasn't cursing, huge. you know, it was like, okay, he's getting straight to the point. He was smooth, he was thuggish, but he was, you know, so I said, okay. Then that's when things start to evolve. You got to think that's when the hip hop started to go West Coast, East Coast, you know. Mm. By then I'd migrated to the North. So now, do, 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 boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so mm. I'm East Coast all the way, but I love all our platforms from West, East, North, South. Same. I like good music. All the sounds, even though I rep the East, I love all the sounds myself too. Before we focus on the East, maybe, and when you got up here, I want to just um, 
just for the people at home to get the full story. Um, you mentioned it though, but you're you're from Alabama, right? You're not from Maine originally. So how yeah, I'm from Mobile. I'm from Mobile, the bottom. Damn, Mobile too. Is that that's not the capital, but that's one of the bigger cities, right? It's 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 like the major city. It's like uh, it's, I like to tell people all the time, it's like Maine. If you flip Maine upside down, it's a coastal route. Gotcha. And we got fish, you know, we got the lobster. We got all the different elements that Maine got, except for we're down there. Yeah. And the sound is different. Yeah, and the climate too, like very muggy down there, I bet. As opposed to up here where you get those cold ass winters and shit. When did you officially come to Maine? First time, like 1991. Sweet. Um, you know, my family came up like in the in the um, you know, like late. 80s i came up for a summer visited family went back home and i came back and then my mother said you know what this is where we had grandmother's family and we migrated i went to school here you know hell yeah hell yeah yo. 90 percent of my friends are in maine no shit. and the other 10 percent are scattered throughout the world how old were you when you came here how young were you i guess oh uh, i was like uh 15 16 you know oh, yeah, i was young so much yeah. you at that point. Yeah. Said, I already saw that life and then I came here. It's a different world. You know, so it's like, okay, man. Hell yeah. I like this. What were your first impressions of the 207? Oh, fuck the snow. <laughs> that was it. It was like, ah, ah snow. <laughs> ah, what the hell is this about? It's definitely and then it's like, all right. After that, you just get accustomed to the life, the maintain life, the main maniac, you know. <laughs> And you know what I'm saying? I've been a maniac since since then. Like I tell people all the time, don't get it fucked up. I'm from Maine, but I I, I was born in Alabama. I'm from Maine, so and that's 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 gonna stick with me to the day I go up or down, however you want to whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So I'm a Maine representative. I rep us. See us, and I'm I'm from the Dirty Lou. I love it. And I lived in Portland. You know, I lived in Westbrook. I lived in a lot of the boroughs, so I got to see different main lives you know and situations in different you know environments beaches you know for sure for sure i've, I've seen a lot of maine i love that but okay. lewis and Auburn is my home you know this is like it's like that old saying you can get out the projects but you can't get it out it's the same thing with the Lou. Mm. that's the same thing with the amityville project that's why we, we that's it's the house but not the house mm. you get in it you can't get out of here so and you listen to it, it's, it's for out-of-towners, it's for, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lot of things that people don't understand about Maine, and that's why I say, I know what Maine has to offer, you know, yeah. oh, it ain't just true. fucking lobsters and, 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 you know, cold and bears, and we got good, we, we got the, we got the real rapper weed, like I tell people all the time, I've been smoking rapper weed since I was 17, <laughs> just, when people start talking about all the, oh yeah, smoking this, and it's like, that's old, that's nothing new. That's what we do out here. This is our life. That's truth. That's really true. Hell yeah. Well, maybe this uh, is a good transition into the next question, perhaps. Um, I got kind of like a picture of where you're from and how you got to Maine, but what were your hobbies, you know, as a teen, as a young, and what did you spend your time uh, doing? As a teen, I played ball. Hell yeah. That was like my thing. I played basketball. I was short enough to dunk, but not tall enough to put it all the way in, God. if that makes any sense. No, yeah, so, relax. you know, it's, it's one of those things. And, and then after the ball, and it was like, I always had a knack for music. So when I was 17, I bought my first set of turntables. That's how I actually got into the music. I was a DJ before any of this. Ooh. The sound, yeah. you mm, name? the rhythm. I never name? wanted to make, I never wanted to rap. I always wanted to make the sound for you, for other people. I was mixing before I knew what mixing was. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so that's how it transformed to decades later. I always had the sound. I always knew what it sound like or what it should sound like. But, Just from generations of like my mother. My mother was a music head. Mm -hmm. That's the sound, that old, uh, melodic, uh, old school, you know, singing in the kitchen, cooking. Yeah. So I caught it then too as a youth, like, oh, this is and those songs never I got a good memory and, and those songs never went away. So I can hear a sample, I can hear a remix, any of those, I can pull it and tell you who it is off top and pass. It's just one of those things. And certain things don't go away, you know, and music stuck with me. 
And um, I just took it more serious over the last, say 10 years, 11 years, obstacles, life encounters, situations where I said, you know what, why am I investing money and energy into something that I love to do every day? I wake up to listen to this. I go to sleep. I don't feel right if I don't. So why not do something that I know it's, it feels good and it's, it's right? That's true. I mean, a lot of people and don't it's even understand. About, it ain't just about that. It's also, that's my hobby now. Yeah, facts. The job now. Yeah, so. man. I love that. I want to go back to the DJ part real quick. Did you have like a name? Were you like official or were you kind of just- Oh, God, I had a, I was like Casper. I was, I was like just <laughs> any type of, you know, and then uh, Doc, they used to, it was, uh, it was, uh, what, what was the other one? Um, Money, D-Money, it was just weird names and I never stamped one. Yeah. I never stamped one. Because I felt like if I stamp a DJ name, then I'm going to get looked at like there's DJ such and such when there was at the time there was real DJs that were like phenomenal for us what I started to learn so I had to I didn't have YouTube to learn Mm. I had to do a firsthand experience Mm. I had no coach Mm. I had to coach myself how to use that fader use the channels and you know how to hook everything up I had to learn on my own and you know I had a few people that got into it in the process and they taught me theirs and I taught them and you know and then I said you know what let me start recording these things that I'm making and then I started listening to them I'm like "Mm, this sound better than some of the DJs not to disrespect no DJs but it's, it's just like so I just got more into it and I just kept buying more records buying different mixes going from a smaller bigger bigger Went from Gemini's, went from Gemini's to the techniques, to the to regular technique, to 12s, SLs. And then, you know, here I am now, buying 1,000s, 2,000s, SP400, uh, MPs, two. Just the list goes on. So I went from DJing to actually making sounds. Oh, I'm doing an interview. You come on in, though. Come on in, come on in. Hey, uh, in a good friend of mine just popped in, and he didn't know I'm, I'm in an interview. I didn't tell nobody. It's one of those. Hey, no I got to tell people. This uh, this is a friend of mine. I'm letting him introduce you. He's an artist, too. Stone the General, good, bro. This is Benny P. He, he's the... Uh, I'm a, I'm a, we'll get back to that later, but we'll get back. he's a good artist, good friend, and, you know, he didn't know we had the interview, but um, we'll get back yeah. to the interview. No, I'll talk to you in a little bit. But, yeah, we work on a regular, though, so this is, this is home base, the studio, so... I, I, this is like when you think it's time to relax, it's time for me to work. Like right now, he's ready to record. We started recording earlier. He's ready to go back in. I love to so, do that though. They're ready to jump right And in. that's the thing. We we we, we want to have a team of people that everybody's comfortable. There's no, everybody wants to make different music. And that's the thing, what I like. I like making different music. He makes different music than me. But it's, Hip hop, it's all it's, it's, it's what we like. Rhymes, creating. yeah. So back to the um, DJing thing. Yeah, that was my that was my hobby, I guess, and my thing. And then somehow I said, you know what? Start writing, cause you know what? You have stories. You got ideas. You got other people's stories. You can relate it to other people, and they'll listen. Oh, I come from that era where you know some people will listen to you. So I said, you know what, let me do some music and see how I can do it. I always freestyle with the homies and all that, but actual writing and then actually putting it down, I had to, you know, sit back and say, let me do this. And when I started doing it, Benny, it was no like back-to-back takes. I was one, two takes and I'm done. For real? That's my thing. If I got to do more than that, I, it's, I'm, I'm overworking myself and I've never done more than one or two takes and I'm done. Wow. Me, and that's just the thing I have. And it's a memory thing. Remember how we talked about the memory? Yeah. That's how it is. I got it embedded in my hand. If you got to do it more than twice, don't do it no more. I like that. I mean, everyone's and I won't do process, it. Process, man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Always and that's just part of my memory bank. That's all. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. I want to get maybe more into that and you getting into, uh, you know, I'm seeing and recording. But before I do, I think one okay. important thing is the uh, presence, maybe, of music in your youth. You know, I think a lot of people mm. I talk to, they're either, you know, have musicians in their family. You mentioned your mother was a big music head. 
or they were a big fan of hip hop themselves or of music themselves. Um, so was music around you growing up? Yep. There we go. You wanna see something? Yeah. I'm gonna show you the whole of my life, right? Pulling this is something I'm gonna show right you. Now. You see what it says? Mob family. MF, FM. Oh, you flip it, yeah. It's FM or FM. And, and where I'm from, we, where I'm from is called Mob Town. Gotcha. So Definitely Mob Family it. was, yeah, it's called Mob Town. That's, that that's, it's, so uh, that was a project, my brother, my cousin, rest in peace, my brother, but they did a project and that was, that was, oh man, like 20 years ago. Whoa, that CD you just showed us that was 20, 20 years ago. Yep. You should have been in your blood for decades, then, dude. I'm the only one who had that copy of that. I, I guarantee you. Damn. Yeah, the cover, or anything. Frame that. So I never. I got it on my on my FM thing right in there with it. You know. Got you, got you, got you. Respect, respect. And it was, and this was nothing that was created by design. I found this. I found this after, like later on. I found this after we already had the uh, uh, idea for uh, forever maintain. Yeah. That's just the aura of certain things, Balance. you know. MF is a youth. Yes, the balance. Yes. Adults more. Even when I talked to Lab and I showed Lab, I'm like, Lab, you want to see something? He didn't even know. I showed him. I look, I look, look, this is 20 years ago. And he's like, oh, shit, MF, F, yeah. I said, yeah. we didn't, that was nothing we designed. It's just things that happened. And that's something, you know, that's history. That is history. Well, hell yeah. So it's FM's, FM's, the, FM's the, the, the future, you know? I love it. I love the passion. Well, let's um, get into UMCing then, Doc Lowe. Um, okay. How did you get the name Doc Low? Where, where did that come from? Okay. Here's another one. Oh. Yeah, I, I stay in low, and I always doctoring. I'm always doctoring to something. I'm, I, I'm, they, I, my job before I got hurt, right? I, this is, I got a lot of stories, like lots of them. So I got hurt two years ago. I worked for ten years straight, and I was a, I worked for a property management company, and I did everything. So I was a jack of all trades. So taking care of I can doctor on anything. You give it to me, and you tell me something, I'll fix it. So. That was one of my things, and we always made a joke about it. And then my brother, he's like, you and Lab, you guys are like uh, Marty McFly and uh, Doc from the Back to the Future. Doc, You're like right? Doc. He's, so, yeah. So it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's just a lot of stuff. So it's like, and I stay in low. That's my, I've been wearing low since I was 10, 11. So and we go. it's one of those things I never got away from. I, I never went to other things. And it was nothing because it's, it, it's just what it is. It feels good. It's my style my my appeal and people see this oh i like that and just that's what it is everything low and and it's a lot of artists out there that say that same thing because that's what it is everything low nim low uh him low it's a lot of lows out there you know dark dark low, low dark low, hello. Dark low. yeah good. so it's and, and 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 i just peeped in you know not and, and, and i always listen to certain artists because that's what we do we cater to our sound mm -hmm. so in dark low they got low gang, you know, so, and then, you know, him low, they got their own little low situation. Yeah. We didn't go off of the gang. We just went with FM and stayed with the low, mm. lower theory. I, bet. I love that. Well, Stay when, low. Everything's always low. Yeah. Keep it, keep it very mellow. Everything. I love that. That's yes. Simple. Um, low. Well, back to the Doc Low saga of MCing then. When did you really start to take up rapping? Like what time period? What year? Do you remember? I started like uh, the first time I did a uh, single back in like um, 09, 010. Bet. It was with one of my cousins, uh, Misery. Sweet. And uh, he's from out here too. He was, he's somewhere else. But um, we did a track and it was like, I did the one take and I was like, I'm, that was it. And they were like, come on, let's do more. And I was just coming home from a, little, a, a bid. So I was like, I got a situation where I'm working. This ain't my thing right now, but we'll get up and do, you know. Mm. And I made sure that I copped a beat machine and then I just was writing from that point on. Mm. And I, I've thrown away more than I've kept, paper-wise. Mm. I feel, yeah. Facts and just, and like, because it's just one of those things, You that's that can always be recreated and better and, 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 and body of works. And it wasn't about the body, it was just me doing the craft and putting words together yeah, now it's more like it make it make sense mm -hmm. even if it, everybody can't relate to what i'm saying they'll get it and understand the message where i'm going from point a to point z mm -hmm. not b it's the power of good art you know letting people into your and, language um, they can't relate to it i like i don't like to freestyle over other people's rhymes 
I, it doesn't, how do I say it? It doesn't help me. Mm. It doesn't help my craft. But if somebody got some new shit and it's banging right then and there, I'm going off of that right then and there. Mm. Like Riggs dropped something that's hot right now, I'm going right then and there. Yeah. I'm not going to sit back and go try to go off it later. I'm going right then and there. Like yeah. You're in the moment. You're very like, I'm in, the I'm in my, right then and there. Other than that, I got to create it and I got to, I got to sit back and just hear something melodic and, and, and then I go from there. I don't need no beats, no drum. I just need something, something to register in the background, yeah. some birds, some water. Something and I go from there. I like that. It's almost like the, um, like a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I don't need all that extra. When I need that quietness to write that and then. When I'm almost done, that's when I want that boom, 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 boom in there. I like that, man. It's a very unique process. And I, the I like drums, the kicks, the snares. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Every, and like, I, like certain people, they like their drums and all that highs and all that first. Yeah, the hi-hats and shit. It does nothing for me. It don't do nothing for me. Makes yeah. me irritated. <laughs> I get irritated. I'm like, oh, oh do I have to? Yeah, because I want to hear something smooth, jazzy. Quiet. Mm. That way you can spit your bars and warm up. It's like a warm up. It's like mm. breakfast. After mm. you have your breakfast, then you might you might want to smoke a blunt after or some another coffee. Yeah, both. Um, both. Yeah, before and after. Yeah. Oh yeah. So have yeah. the coffee before yeah. and after. Oh yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, were there any MCs you looked up to when you first started to spit? Oh. Uh, Ones I know or the mainstream. Yeah, I guess uh, the you know, like, you know, bigger, big. I mean, honestly, fuck it though. If there's people in your area that would inspire yeah, you too. Put like this, like, the one of one of my. Whew, put like this, Dre Singer, Andre Hicks. That's like one of my like top MCs. Like yeah, Andre Hicks. He's been on like like literally like like I mean like when I say I don't just say that I have his, I have his projects. Like I listen to his projects, and. He is phenomenal, like, so, but on the other, other scale, there's, there's like Nas, you know, Riggs is like one of my ethos. This is, I can give you a list of guys that are like. So they're both from Rochester, they, right? Or, uh, yeah, Rochester, Ito from Rochester. Ito's a, he's, some of the guys, they have it and they ain't, they don't like to fabricate. They don't like to make things up. And that's one thing I don't like to make up around. I like to tell you facts, and give you the truth. Mm. The mm. Past, present, what I'm trying to do, bad, the good. Mm. And you know, I, I like those artists more or less. Should I say? Love. So I like, I like you know, Jay. You know, you know, big. You know, I could give you a list of artists that I like, but some of those artists I don't listen to anymore because there's artists like me, you know, Dre. That's you know that I rather listen to because they're relevant and they also know what's going on in our neighborhoods. Mm. They're in the neighborhoods, not outside. Mm. So. That's most of the thing. That's what I can only talk about. I feel you, 100%. Maine. I can only talk about Maine. Lewiston, Auburn, Portland, Gustav, Waterville. Those are places I can talk about. Yeah. And I can talk about little places in Boston and New York where I go and my peoples are, but that's not what I'm doing. That's not my music. And I'm down south, so I just got back from down south. Love down south. I'll talk about it. That's later, see? Mm. Maine's now. So I got to focus on FM. Appreciate how present and also you are, how authentic you are, man. I appreciate that, and I don't try to. I I never tried to be like any other artist. Mm. I never tried to sound or flow or or you know try to um, mimic mimic a style. I just yeah. I, I I just go in off of what I feel off the the beat the vibe. But also at the same time, I love deliveries. I love certain deliveries from artists. Yeah. Old school, new school. Oh, for sure. Man. And and that's one of the things too. I I, I love the the fact that um there is ranges of different artists, whether there's ten different volumes in one area or all over, it creates different sound for us to create our own sound. Mm. And that's the thing that my brother we spoke about. We don't want to sound like New York. We don't want to sound like. Canada, we don't want to sound like Florida, Atlanta. We want to sound like Maine. Our own sound. Our own sound. No matter if we have our hardcore, our softcore, our underground, our um, trap, or we want it to sound whatever, like us. Whatever, whatever yeah, we want it to sound like us. 
authentic story. And, you know what it is, man. Man got and, 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 it's, and it's nothing to do with no one else because everyone else across the world, guess who they repping? New York, Boston, wherever they're from. So ain't nothing wrong with repping where you're from. 100%. You don't have to go to some other place to put on for your city. You can put on for your city right Exactly. Here. Right right there. And I tell all my homies all the time from New York, Boston, all over, you can still do this shit and be in Maine because this is where you at. You can still rep what you're doing here and there. In there, here, there, here, in there. You bring it with you, you do both. You go, as I, as I say. Yes. I like that. Well, I resonate with that. Well, let's move on into uh, maybe some more current times. We've gotten a great, you know, uh, time span of you up to this point, but there's a very important figure, I think, um, someone you collab with a lot, someone who makes pro- uh, produces beats and makes uh, beats with you, and that's, of course, uh, Lab. Um, Lab Ralphie. Yeah, Lab Ralphie. Um, does he go by Lab, or is it still Lab Ralphie? It's still Lab. It's, it, you know, it's, it's still Lab, you know. Sweet. But Lab Ralphie, you know, we all evolve when we change, so. Exactly. He's Lab. He's, he's Lab, you know. Lab. He's Lab. Hell yeah. What was your first hip hop memory specifically with Lab? And for those who don't know, oh, Lab God. is a producer who does a lot of beats for uh, Doc. And uh, I've known Lab from the womb, before Ooh. birth. For real. So, and Baby said all that. He's, that's my nephew. So, yeah. at the end of the day, it's one of those things where his mother is like us. She listens to the same shit we listen to. So, guess what? Think about what he had to go through coming up. He had to hear every range of music mm-hmm. that was known at the time mm. and at the time it's good music the 90s come on. Oh, come on so he got all of that and then threw it all into a pot and then he said you know what let me start rapping mm. and he's rapped better th- before the beat see what i'm saying he went from one level and then went to another one like i did i went from dj into doing a little bit of everything mm. so now it's one of those things the first time lab spit it was at the era of the like, um, everybody wanted to do the kind of like the Drakey thingy, you know, not yeah. really the singing aspect, the Drake going in yeah. before the singing. Got you. And then that's when it was like, okay, you you got that, you got it. Hell yeah! Do you remember? Just figure uh, out how you, which way you want to go with your flow. Exactly. Now it doesn't even matter which way you go with your flow because everybody's flowing in a hundred different ranges. It's, you can't even put you can't put hip hop in a box anymore. It's, it's all over the place. Oh, you know, I guess you never could, but now it's even more so harder than ever to do that, in my opinion. Um, when did y'all start to uh, get the idea to make music together? Oh, let's see. It was about um, two thousand and before I moved to this situation. So two thousand fourteen, thirteen. A minute then. And it was like we were we were doing it. But it wasn't nothing that was like sealed. It was like we were still trying to figure out basic plugins and speakers. And you know, we're doing it off of computer speakers. Got you, got and you. one speaker. The come up. So it was one of those things. It was like, is this what we really want to do? Mm. And it's like, why not? And it was just the more we just said, you know what, let's do more, let's do more. We said, let's invest. Why spend our money going everywhere else? That's what happened. Mm. We spent money going to other people and no results. Don't outsource. Keep it in-house is what you're saying. So I said, why not create a situation for me and my all of my people? And hopefully everybody can see the movement, see the wave, see the direction and say, okay, y'all got something. Not question the fact what we're doing. Mm. Say, y'all got something. Because mm. everything's a question. Instead of saying, got it. You know what you're doing. So it's one of them things we, we're trying to stay focused on making good music yeah, I love for everybody, that. for everybody, not just for us. Mm. Well, cause that's the, and that's the thing I had to learn. I can't just make music for myself. Mm. It's for everybody. For everybody. That's truth though. Yep. That's when you get the bigger picture though. I mean, obviously you have the expression and the craft and you uh, enjoy those aspects of it. But it's not just you going to be listening to it. It's not just going to be you who's affected by it. And when you understand that piece of the game, and I think it can empower you more as an artist. I love to see people make good music. I love to see people, when they hear good music, the reaction that they get from it. No matter if it's mine or someone else's, I love that feeling. That's the best so, feeling, man. One, at least one of them. You get those goosebumps and everything. Yeah, goes. yeah, I got them now. Ooh, ooh. One of those things. I was getting some neck bumps. You just say a word and you get them. Yeah, bro. That's when you know it's real. That's when you know it hits you. You can't fake the funk if that's if that's the case. Um, 
I love that. Well, these themes definitely, I think, are prevalent in Forever Maintain and FM Records. And I feel like that was maybe, you know, the vessel that allows you and Lab to really take your shit to the high gear or a higher gear, at least, than you were, you know, six, seven, eight years ago. When did y'all start to get the idea to form FM Records? And when did that mantra start? Uh, this is a crazy thing. Like three years ago, Before you it was one of those work. things. It was like, say that again now? You said you got I missed that. work, right? And then you... Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. But it, it was one of those things. I take my kids to a party at the jump park. Strange story. I almost lose my leg walking off of the tr- jump thing and got through like 10 feet. In the air, across the room, dislocated my leg. And I was in the hospital, surgeries, in bed for a year. And in the process of me doing that, all, I was in bed working, in the bed, laying in the bed. Damn, wait, so was it one of those like trampoline places, you mean, or what was it? Yeah, it was an accident. It was an accident. Somebody walked on the trampoline, but what happened to me was a one out of a million things that could happen you to somebody. Everything went in my leg. Whoa. Yes. Everything went in my leg at one time, except for my knee. My ACL, my PCL, my menisca. All my arteries, I mean, not nope, that's the only thing that didn't happen. My major artery didn't snap. But a centimeter more, I would have lost my leg. So that's when I was just like, you know what? Take this, what I'm doing, serious. Don't just play around with it. Go ahead and go full force. Spend more money on it. Spend more time in there. And and I wasn't working anymore. I couldn't work. So I said, yeah, you yeah. know what? This is the best time for me to actually go even harder. And you had been thinking about And then quarantine hit. That's true, too. Because then you have- Well, we were already thinking about that beforehand. We yeah, didn't understand the it was the resources crazy. and we didn't have the money and it was just a lot of stuff that worked in our favor but worked against us. And he worked one job, I worked one, so we had to squeeze in time. It was always a time. Gotcha. And it like I said, when I got hurt, it was like one of those things that just gave me enough time and energy. And I didn't even have it. I didn't even have it. I was like messed up literally. And I still was like focused, like more focused on the music than I was my leg. Hell yeah. Oh, I want to get like a time. <laughs> Which is right. crazy. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, how am I more focused on my music than my leg? Well, and then I started to. You don't want to um, focus on the pain, right? But um... Yeah. And that's what happened. I didn't. So, and I got past that. And then I'm limping around still. And just, I'm, <laughs> I'm making myself make music. I I'm that. making myself make music. So I went almost two years making myself make music. Literally. And now I'm back up on my feet. I'm back round walking. Yep. So curious. the job I had, it just was like, I can't go back to work because I was on my knees under sinks, putting doors, windows, and Ooh, I was doing everything. So I can't do none of that. So it just gave me, instead of 50% of what I could do, it gave me a, a whole 100% of what I could do mm. with the music. Mm. I had a whole 100% I could just put into it. Because I had nothing else to do. Like a blessing in disguise almost. Yeah, it, it was. It was. I tell people all the time. It's, it's one of those things that happen. And I'm not mad. I wrote a song when you hear it on the Amityville when I say, um, Cyborg, Robots, Rods, and still causing me naturally to be on point to kill. Get money and music, only thing I can feel. That's, you know, that's real. Everything's real. So, and um, just going to keep going, though. I can't stop. No, you can't, yo. I want to get a timeline too, real quick, because I kind of got off pace. So you start. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Forever maintain, like that idea. Then you get hurt, and then you're like, I'm gonna, you know, keep. Doing then we it. said, let's go, let's go, go. let's not stop, tough, let's go. Double check. Sweet yeah, why stop? It, especially the universe kind of sends you a sign that hey, you're gonna. It's, it sent it to me, like, listen, just do it. You're already doing it anyway. Just do it. Yeah, I got a question too. It's not. It's more about like when you got shot up in midair, I can't imagine Oh that. God. So what's your fucking mentality? Like when you're about to hit the ground, you like, oh. Oh my God, I didn't know what happened. I didn't know what was going on. I thought somebody literally picked me up and threw me because I didn't feel it at all. I didn't feel it. And then when I hit the ground, I knew something was wrong because I went into a shock, right? You in instant. Shock at that point if you're I went in shock, but it wasn't a shock where I said, you know what? Don't panic. I went in a shock where I said, don't move. Just lay there. And all my friends were like, get off, oh, get off, oh, get off, just get off the fuck. I said, no, my leg is broke. They thought I was joking. And then my best friend, she's a female. She comes over, said, get the fuck up. I'm like, no, my leg is broke. And she looked down, she said, oh, oh my God. I got on pants though. So whatever she saw, I never looked. I never looked. I never once looked, I never sat up That's and I laid there. 
That's and then I laid there, and all of a sudden, Benny, worse, it was weird. All of a sudden, my body just poured water, not piss or nothing, just water out of my body just started coming out, like, like from the shop. And the ambulance guy, he turned pale. He didn't know what to do. So he had to call for backup. They had to pick me up, and like six of them, and took me to the hospital. They put me back together, put me under. And I still didn't have the surgery because my elasticity of my, of my leg stretched so much. I had to wait for it to come back together. I had to wait three months to have my first surgery. Whoa. So after I had my first surgery, I was laid in the bed for like six months, eight months. Um, then I had to have another surgery. And then was, and after that, it was all therapy after that. Bicycles, walking, running. Did you blow but it's a daily, I, it's a struggle. Were they letting you get high? Huh? Were they letting what? you get high? I don't want, I didn't want the meds. I didn't want the medication that they were trying to give me. So I. <laughs> Tremendous, yo, tremendous. I'm smoking yeah. now. That's intense, man. Cause I, I always just appreciate But that's a video too. That's a whole video too, like the Kanye Wire situation. I got that video to show you. So I'm gonna, yeah, that's another, you know, a little sneak. Yeah, you know. yo. So I gotta do a little thing for that. So damn man. Well now I'm I'm respecting your hustle even more because not only you gotta like, you know, just go out there and put the craft and actually your body gave out and you had to heal and put in time for the craft. The and do music at the same time. So respect, yo, respect. And the one thing about it, numbers don't lie. And I have numbers to show the dates and when I got heard and when I'm doing the music yeah. from recording to all that. So if they want to see all that, I got the actual facts and all that. So if it ever comes to, you know, like, oh, you couldn't have done how. No. Yeah. Yes. Well, and 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 I recorded a lot. I didn't record a little. I recorded probably thirty songs. That's a perfect segue, actually, because I wanted to now talk about um, the Amityville EP. Is that the official yeah. first Doc Low project? Yes, it was. Yes, yeah. it was. And the first and it was, was on FM. Yes, on FM, and we did it where it was my project, but it's also Labs because yeah. he gets his credit, yep. and it's and, and 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 it's us as a group too. Now we're like the Mob Deep too. Now don't get it twisted. Mm. If you listen to him. He doesn't talk all that extra, but I, I'm i there to back it, see? Mm. So it's one of those things, a piggyback thing. And that's what we do. We piggyback off each other. Mm. It's hard to do that with anybody else, but somebody you've known, oh, you can do that. Before. Yeah, so, so it's, like I said, people call us, you know, like uh, Pete Rock, CL Smooth. Like, they give us different, like, oh, you guys, this is what we do. And we know even, like, if we try to do things separate, it don't sound right all the way. Our best people work people is together home. with, you know, yeah, we can do it. Like, I'm home right now. He's in New Hampshire. Yeah. I'm in the FM studio. He's in New Hampshire doing this road thing, you know, yeah. recording whatever he's doing on the road. Yeah. So home base, when he comes to home base is when we go to work. Mm. We go to work. Respect and that. we like put like this. He was here uh, over the weekend. We did five songs. We're hoarding. Yeah. No, we're hoarding only because of, we don't know what's. You know how it is, situations and yeah, you gotta plan sometimes. And, 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 and we're doing projects. We don't want to force too much out. We don't want to not give enough. And True. and we got a lot. We have a lot. We have a lot. And oh, I don't doubt. Like it, when yeah. I say I was recording, I was recording to put a lot out. And then I realized I was doing too much. I like that. Sometimes and sometimes when you do too much, you don't even realize you're so head of the aura of life that a lot of songs I made, if you listen to them. And you see the time and date. I was talking about masks and gloves and shit before the quarantine and all that. So, wow. like, literally, like, the whole thought of something like that. Yeah. And I, it's, and wild, it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot now. I got, we got some stuff for you. Oh, I'm excited. For us. Let me not say for you, for us. I know, yeah, for the, for the state. Well, for the awesome. state, yes. Um, Everyone at home, the Amityville EP is on Bandcamp. It's a pretty gritty project, some great production, some great rap. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, if you aren't tapped in, this podcast can tap you into another set of artists you should be listening to. And I appreciate that. And like I said, I wanted to see you after lab because we're two different entities. We're two different people. Yeah. We think different, but we have the same common goal, mm. which most people do when they want to do something good when it comes to our field of work, music. You want to do good things. And it's not just about music with us. We like doing good things for the community people. We're active, you know. And um, the thing with the Amityville, once we put it out, we were on a mission. 
Yeah, what would you we did that for? around October. Yeah. After that October season was over, around the Christmas time, that's when we put the um, Forever Maintain that project out and we pulled it back down mm -hmm. because it was a collective situation, but we had one person on there that was like, I didn't want to put that out. You know how something. All right, cool. We were going to put you in a situation where you can just collect and do your own however you want to do it. We were just going to promote you. And it was like, you know what? Just pull it. We'll just eliminate that out of there and we'll just re release the project and have it more songs, have, you know, a little more um, main, that main on there, yeah. not just the, the weirdness or the craziness. Because that project was basically like dark, but not dark. We want to give you some insides and outside, but messages gotcha. for everybody. That, that was the aim for them. All right. Hell so yeah. Not just about, it wasn't about, you know, one religion, one race. No, it was for anybody out here because we're so diverse now. Yeah, yeah. People Thank need to understand it's, it's, it's a lot of diversity going on. So it's the same with the music. So we want to try to make music that's going to be diverse. Our diversity, though. Yeah, our main diversity. In your words, in your perspective. In my perspective, our main what what I see, I can only rap about what I see. In Maine, I, I got a ra I got a raccoon and a, a possum out in my yard, and you know, I got a dock across the street. You know, so it's only certain things I can, and they're gonna say Maine. What? Is this Maine? That's why, yeah, that's why we do what we Maine. do here, man. That's why we always. And guess what? Yes, right. Yes, yes. And don't think they don't know about us. They try to hide the fact they know about us. Mm. Mm. It's one of those things. You go to any state in this region, they're going to be somebody that's going to talk about it. Whether it's, it's always the bad anyway, or the lobsters. Yeah. But they know about us. We out here they like to deny us ours. Give us ours, New England. Give us ours. They like to deny to us. Say, yeah, of course, we got a lot to say. For real, for real. And I love, I love the passion, bro. I, I do love it. Um, one more question about the Amityville EP too. How did it feel when you saw that out? You know, you have these thoughts, you went through a rough uh, injury and you finally got a little, you know, concept EP out there showcasing both you and Lab's talents, rapping, production, even kind of like a branding um, standpoint with FM Records being center stage on that. How, how did that feel? It actually felt like, it felt good. At the same time, it felt like, damn, did we get to that door that we needed to get people to see that corridor? You know, it was like, can you see me in the, you know, and I got that feeling too, which is kind of like us, damn, I don't think they feeling this, but, mm. and then it's like, okay, we know what we doing though. So, and then I said, okay, why am I going to be so hard on myself? This shit's raw. True. It's raw. You don't need anybody else. It's raw. And, it's, and, 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 and from that point on, I said, you know what? This project is actually a project that was put together. It was a reason behind it. It was a rhyme and reason. And we did it to showcase, not just our talent, to showcase Lab's talent, my talent for us production-wise, and how we can make a difference in what can happen with the music. Mm -hmm. We made a difference. Because you don't hear projects like, and I'm not, like I tell people, I don't like to tw twist my wrist or twist my thumb or twist, or whatever, you know, they'll say you make yourself look better than other people. Yeah. But when you know that you you created something that has a different sound and it's no going a direction, saying. that music is going, not just the the, the um, hip hop aspect, it's, it's getting back to the rhymes, the beats mm. and the lyrics and the the art of storytelling. Cause mm. we don't, that's one thing I won't do. I won't go to away from the storytelling. Mm. I can't do that. Cause then I feel like that's not oh, me yeah, doing yeah. my part in the music. I feel so like I'm taking away if I start doing stuff that ain't in that, uh, what do you say? That that bracket of uh, what should be hip hop. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, so. It has, to be, it has to be authentic to you. I, I respect that, yo. And we made sure that we didn't make every song the same on Amityville. Mm -hmm. Like the, when, when it first started out, that song is an intro, meaning it had no rhyme or reason. Mm -hmm. It was just an intro. The next song was Amityville. Now we're trying to explain to you, welcome to a place that'll trap you like Amityville. I let it be known off top. 
So there was no like, well, why is there a house in this? Man? It's not about no one. And then it goes from there to let you know what's going on. That's why every time you hear in the, at the end of the song, I want to know what's going on in the hood. Because it was just one of those things that we said, we want people to know what's going on in the hood. No matter if it's Lewiston, Auburn, Portland, Augusta, Waterville, there's a hood everywhere. Mm. And people don't like to give us credit for having hoods. And I'm not glorifying hood. I mean, places like where we live, where it's not all rich and it's all glamour and glitz. Yeah, man. I'll never brag like happen. about where I live at and how it fucked up it is. I would never glorify nothing around here. Mm. But I like to tell the good things and the bad things. All it just put it up. It's a balance when you talk about everything. It's almost journalism and, in a sense. You're letting people know what your area is like. Because I'm not destroying where I live. I'm trying to build it up and let people know it's good things here too. And there's situations that happen and there's things that go on. But guess what? This is Maine. Lobsters, moose, bears, Old Orchard yeah. Beach, yeah, it's my hometown. Bates yeah. College. It's all type of stuff. You already know, man. Damn. So I'm not going to get off of Maine like for us talking about What's going on? Portland, everything's going to have a place in a song eventually. Because mm. it's Maine. There's so many places in Maine that I've been and I can go. And I go all the time. I was just down your way in Portland that way. Yeah. And um, at the mall. A buddy of mine just opened a sneaker store. Oh, bet. I yeah. wish I could plug him right now, but I'm not. It's not about that. <laughs> but it's, um, candy, candy. it's one of those things. I go out there, support, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about Maine all around. I'm not just about Lewis and Auburn. Now it that. used to be an aura. It used to always be an aura of Lewiston, uh, Portland. Uh. No, it's all the same. It's just different people, and everything's together. evolving different. I love that. I love it. And that's what I want my music to do. I want my music to evolve from what we had in Maine to what we we can create and what's to come. That's a beautiful thing, man. And, and we got a lot that we got. Lot, we have a lot. How think about this? I haven't heard too many artists that talk about Maine other than New York. Boston, people that come here for lobster or weed or whatever. Yeah. Not us. It's not us. We had a couple of people and they just disintegrate. Mm, They're out there, but they, you know what I mean? They disintegrate, but I ain't trying to disintegrate. I'm trying to be over the head like smog and it never go away though. Love that, yo. I'm over, I'm like a plant. One of those power plants where the smog never goes away. It just always, you're the sharing. It always, always hovers. Rain. It always hovers. And that's what FM, that's what we, that's why we stamped the FM, forever maintaining. Mm. So people get that main. That's important to me too. It ain't a gang. It ain't a gang. It's a, it's a life. Everybody need to maintain. And ever since we, and, and this is the aura of that. Ever since we started saying forever maintain, every artist I hear, they saying, yeah, you got to maintain, got to, literally, like they saying something, I could give you a list of them, but it would rattle my brain to go through how many I've heard yeah. say they have to maintain. And watch what happened after this conversation. You're gonna listen to those people and you're gonna hear them say, you're gonna be like, oh shit, yeah. he wasn't lying. I'll keep my ears peeled. I'll, I'll try and validate. Because I never not listen to music. I never not. Always listen. You can throw any artist out there just about, and I'm gonna tell you, yay or nay, or that was fire. Oh yeah. That was like that might be a good segue, yo, because I was gonna um do some rapid fire questions before we kind of start to hit the uh, the end segment of questions. If you down, my friend. Oh, uh, here we go. All right, go. Let's go. Let's get it. Who's the MC whose voice, just the voice, you admire? Riggs. I like Riggs' voice. Riggs, yeah, dope voice. Shout out. If if y'all don't know who we're talking about, a home it's Riggs. R I G Z. R I G Z. Just a really good, you know, heavy bars, an underground appeal, kind of like you know, modern the cloth, the cloth. Yeah. The cloth. Exactly. Exactly. Riggs in the cloth. All right. Next Shout out to Riggs. Right. What's the favorite concert you've ever seen? Ooh, that's a toss up. 50 probably. Ooh, 50 was, ooh, oh God, he had a, a good one. Was it like huh? Did you die trying? Yeah. Uh, the, the first 50, the first 50, the yep. first 03, 02. Yeah, that's his that one. Too. Yep, yep. Damn, yep. that's a good concert. But, uh, but I could give you another concert that was amazing, Tribe Called Quest. Ooh. Oh, what? When you see them, Tribe Called yeah. Quest, Queen Latifah. Oh. I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of artists like and met them and like friends with them. Like like uh, a friend of mine I went to school with, Jason Bray, Queen Latifah's his aunt. No she shit. comes here regularly. 
Yeah, yeah, she re- comes regularly. So it's like in in, uh, in 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 UNITY today. UNITY, yeah, 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 oh yeah. That's a classic. Classic, classic, yeah. Hell so yeah. it's like one of those things. It's oh, go ahead, keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. <laughs> non hip hop question. What's your favorite okay. fruit? Banana every day. I eat banana almost every day too, yo. Back to the hip hop. Dream collaboration with the producer. I know you got lab in the lab always, but is there anybody like you know, like a goat you'd ever want to work with? Yeah, um Pete Rock probably. Oh man, yeah, Pete Rock. And then and then I I can't only reason I say Pete Rock because I've listened to Pete Rock since I was a kid, mm-hmm. like literally. But on another note, ALC Alchemist. Alchemist. Alchemist is like big ah, fan. big fan of Alchemist. Uh, and then that's another thing. He he did he did a couple things with uh Boldy. That's who that's who Lab like relates my voice to oh, and like James my caterers. Boldy. I, and I and then when I heard him, I was like, come on, man. Why was that? And then I listened to him more and I'm like, fuck, I like Boldy now. I'm listening. I was yeah, so today earlier too, man. I love Boldy James. I yeah, I, I, yeah. So it's one of those things when you hear somebody and they tell you you sound like and it's like, ah. Yeah, what? So Boldy, shout out to Boldy too. I I Fish and grill. I, 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 uh, what's the one with him and Alcus? And I was just watching the video where they're leaning up against the car. Um, and then... Surfing turf. Surfing turf. Yes, yeah. yes, that's it. Dude, that album. Dude, that price of tea in China is stupid. Price awesome. of tea in China. I love that album. That Vince Staples verse on that song too. That song. What is it? <laughs> they got the video for that. They got the video. I, yeah, I saw, the, um, the bullet holes in that in that building, right? And the and the air's coming through it, or the smoke. And he's standing uh, in the thing in the little. Uh, I love Boldy. You're going to get, I'm, yeah. you're gonna get me in a, in a change. I, I know. I'm starting to think about music, too. Like, damn, Boldy. Next question. Next question. Next question. All right. Back to the kind of food vibes. What's your go-to food spot? It could be Lewiston, Portland, wherever. Oh, okay. If I'm in the Lou, I usually go like the Bobas. Mm-hmm. You know, they got, the, uh, it's, you know, it's like, a, I want to say like Japanese, but Thai, you know, a little bit of mixture. Mm-hmm. Um and, um, you know, I, kind of, I like Chinese. And one of my favorite Chinese places, they went out of business like a year ago because of quarantine. It was called Chopsticks out here. Oh, so crazy. it's like, so, yeah, so it's like one of the things, like, it's a lot of, it's, it depends on what you want to eat. Me, I cook. Mm-hmm. When you listen to my rhymes, when you hear me talking about cooking, I'm talking about cooking. I ain't talking about no drugs. Mm-hmm. See that? Meals. <laughs> I'm talking about when I say I'm whipping up in the kitchen, getting naked, I'm cooking. And people take it like, oh, shit. You no, I'm cook. cooking. I'm really cooking. No, you actually chefing out here. I'm really chefing. I did that other thing too, but that ain't that ain't you know that's Allegedly. past. Allegedly, no, I did. I went to jail for it, so it's no legend. Hey, See, man. that's a whole nother story that's for a Doc. Podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doc, Doc been on both sides of the fence. Mm. So, mm. yeah, I had situations growing up. I was wasn't always a good dude. Mm. Growth, man. Made bad decisions. Yeah. Made bad decisions, but you know part of my life that was behind you know respect that yo respect um let's get back to the rapid fire i got another hip-hop question for you gangstar yeah, yeah. or smith and wesson damn you just do a whole i gotta go with gangstar only because i'm a boston area and not only that the guru, the, the, the guru come on yes Shut it. rest in peace yes in peace so but i'm ahead now don't get it twisted i'm a i'm a boot ahead from that era yeah man. so tech and steel man that was a good one. Illmatic or reasonable doubt? Illmatic. Illmatic. You know what's wicked cool? I was born the same exact week that Illmatic came out. Like I was like, I think, mm. like within like a, a seven day window, maybe like an eight day window, but still, I, I count it as a week. It's pretty cool. Like Benny P. I was Illmatic. And Illmatic, same week, bro. Hey Benny, hey Benny, when you was being born, I was Illmatic. For real, for real. You I was right? Illmatic at that time, meaning. That was the, that's what I, everything he talked about, that's what I was, that was my life, so. Got you, got you, you were living with Nas. Anything rapping. Nas rapped about, that was my life. The text, the Nas, the corners, that was my life. Poetry. Yeah. Poetry. Sounds like you were still at the so, at that time. So that's another thing that, that some people can't understand about music. If you're going to spit it, you got to be, it's got to really be you because it's not going to be genuine and it's going to catch up with you later when they find out you're a fraud or you're a rat or you're a snake or and th- certain things I won't even talk about because that's not me. Yeah. I know what it is. So I've been through that 
Nas, I was Illmatic. Yeah, I was Illmatic on doing it all. That's a bar. I was Illmatic. I like that. Um, mm. All right. Back to like a kind of more lighthearted question. What's your dream vacation spot? Where would you go? Probably like, uh, damn, I want to say Medellin, but it's scary over there. Yeah, Columbia. Dude, yeah, the government be killing people down there, bro. Yeah, they there. So, but um, probably like even even like Rio. A lot of places I would want to go is scary. So I'm gonna end with Amsterdam, Holland. That 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 the original weed areas where it was really free the smoke and land race eras. Hell yeah, bro. All right, final question. Africa and all those other places. I don't want to go nowhere where it's scary. I ain't trying to lose. I'm I'm worried about my life. I don't want to get ate by no lions and all that and. Yeah, flying in the helicopter to get there, and then you gotta certain things I'm not gonna do it this time around. Yeah, I, feel I ain't feeling to hurt myself no more. You've seen different parts of life that maybe others haven't seen out here, man. You 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 you've been around a little bit. You you want to stay in the more of a, I don't know, right here in the studio. Yeah, exactly. Finish what I was gonna say. Sweet. All right, I got one more rapid fire question. If you could give your uh give your younger self advice, what advice would you give him? Save some money, stop spending it, don't blow it all, and I'd be rich. That's a great Ding! I, hey, <laughs> hey, it would be, it would be Benny's. I like that. Everyone, be saving your pennies. Everybody would get a piece of the pie Ooh. because it would be enough for us to say, guess what? We have our own main Got you. laboratory or whatever, you know, fuck a studio. That's how my mind would have been. We got a compound. You, you'd be having a compound. We'd have a compound, basically, and you have to, you'd have to pay us to get into the compound. Mm, not the other. Yeah, I fuck with that, yo. Hell yeah. Well, sweet, yo. That was the rapid fire questions. You survived. We're gonna wind down here and kind of uh, end the podcast with the questions I usually ask people. Is there anything you've been working on you want to plug or tease the people with? Oh Jesus, it's a lot. Yeah. Now, um, I want to plug Lab, his project he just did. It's for the ladies and the fellas. It's smooth. Life's about balance. You know, it's Lab Ralphie, you know, Instagram or Doc Low 207. Mm. And uh, for his projects, we're working on three, four projects right now. Damn. Yeah. They're, they're already done pretty, pretty much. Hell yeah. We just got to go back and finish, find the right skits, find the right, you know, um, yeah, that kind of but uh, one of my projects is uh, if, if I was David, David like the pro uh, the, uh was he yeah yeah see yep, and a lot of people don't understand David didn't just fight the line or all that. David was the first musician. Mm. A lot of people don't like to talk. Mm. He was the first musician poet. No shit. Yeah, yeah Google it after when you get done. Google it. What did David do? And it's gonna tell you, and you're gonna find David with a harp and all type of things. So. That's one project. And um in the book of Samuel, David is a young shepherd who games fame first as a musician and later by killing the giant Goliath. So music ended up killing Goliath. I didn't know that. You so guess what? Biblical shit out here. It's and, and, and I'm gonna have a song called, you know, like if Dave, if I was David, you know, if David was alive. It's a whole, you know, step thing. It's, I like the concepts. You think about it. Thematic. It's cool, yo. You, you put a lot of things. The same thing you asked kind of about back then. What would I do different? Think about if I was David. Mm, I like that. And I know all the stuff I know now. Hell yeah. All right. And that's so it's one of those things I'm going to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sweet. Yeah, well, no, finish your thought. Finish your thought, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, It was just one of those things where I, I, I felt like you asked the same question that I was already had the project. Yeah. And when you asked me, I was just like, I already got an answer for you for that Perfect. one. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead, though. I love that. Um, this question kind of is more pertains to, you know, everything shutting down last year. Um, when I first started asking this question, it was like legit last year during the height of all this shit. When I first started doing like phone and then video interviews to be more safe and stuff. And uh, I'm kind of targeting it more now towards like 2021 because we're slowly getting out of all that shit. But what was a positive thing that came out of 2020 for you? Was there anything that you want to shout out? Positive. Ah. Mm. I got to put some music out. It's a beautiful time. That was positive. For real, for real. It was, it was, it was one of those things that it gave me a chance to do something for myself too. Mm. 
Think about it. You go all the, you go years of your life not doing nothing for yourself. So it was one of those things I did something for myself. And I can say it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's no one else's. So that was like, you know, one of those things. Before it's overall the world, I mean, it gave certain people opportunities to um, actually open their eyes to what we do. Yeah. And open our eyes too, because once I realized a lot of people in certain situations, it ain't even what it is. They're just there. They 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 don't want to be there because they can't do shows. They can't. They, certain things got taken away, so it opened my eyes to a lot of things and yeah. made me more focused on what I got to do. Made you appreciate what you have, you know. Yo, of course. Yo, yeah. I'm so glad I got what I have. Oh, I got, I got every piece of equipment I need to make any type of music. That's beautiful, yo. I love that. And a lot of people can't say that, and I'm not bragging. It's just one of those things that I I made sure that I invested in my time and energy into yeah. looking for certain things albums like i just went to alabama and i got a whole stack of um, my pops he um I, once he realized i was he said you're doing something like different than me. he's like look i got some records i, I had 20 something years oh, never used them. records hell yeah so Ooh. sample whole time. stack Benny. It's, 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 it's like a set it's called the uh, sound effects and he has the original ones and not none of them were used Damn. So it's, it's all sound effects like cars, um, what is this? Cathedrals, um, vehicles, animals. Oh, that's perfect for like background. You know, so I got, you know, I, I got something. I went home, you know, got a taste of home, Alabama, because I just got back like uh, two weeks ago. Yep. You know, and that's another thing. I went back home. It gave me a different feeling when I came back. Mm. And I came back, I went right in. Mm-hmm. I've only been put like this. I basically did an EP in a in in a weekend. Hell yeah! And um, it's different. I mean, like, it's different. Like, I put some snippets up on. I know you probably caught some stuff, but yeah. just went back to work, trying to stay positive and just keep it going. And then I got a couple, you know, good friends that's that's working too. That we're working on projects they got going, and gonna keep this effing thing popping. Do it, and do more interviews with with with, with you, hey, you know. And keep in tune, man. you know. Respect, respect. Um, all right. Before I ask the last question, do you want to plug your social medias at all, or where, where people can reach you? You know. Um, you can reach me at uh, on Instagram at uh, doclo two hundred seven, or um, it's Lav Ralphie, and that's my partner in crime, nephew. Mm-hmm. It's all one. No matter if you go to one, you're gonna go to the other one. You're gonna link into either one of us. FM. And um, that's pretty much FM. Forever maintain. Hell yeah. You know, and we're gonna do. We had a little situation where we had our own studio in a professional building. It was called a professional building. But we, I'm home. I'm home more than anything. So, and I already had it here. When I say we started cooking in the kitchen, it was we really started cooking in the kitchen. A lot of people here, they think I'll be talking about cooking. Yeah, it's like, nah, we yeah, start cooking in the kitchen. Music, yo. Yeah. So we went from an actual studio to back to the home studio because mm. we were getting more work. We got projects done in the actual studio because we were we were like in that ball state of mind of this is, you know, but mm. it, we came back here and it was like, oh, shit, we should have just... This is where it's at. You can be more comfortable. You just more relaxed. Just like you in your office. It's my office. Yeah, we chill. It's, 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 this forever maintain records studio, whatever you want to call it, label it. This is where I'm at. I love it. And I'm just I'm I'm rebuilding. I like yours. How you got yours? You gave me some ideas. Hey, yeah, I got tons of shit up in here, yo. <laughs> I see it. That's what they gave me ideas. Cause what to do in here? Cause I was just gonna paint the whole thing. I started. Uh, so uh, I'm like, damn, because I got a lot of, you know, stuff like that to hang with music stuff. Yeah. I was just always one of those people I thought it wouldn't look right, but I'm looking at yours from the bubble like, damn. Yeah. You, you long that's what studios should have. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I need inspiration all around me at every time, you know? Around, because guess what? A plain studio, does there's no vibe in there. You get no vibe. That's true. I can look in your studio and write probably 10 songs just from sitting around in there just... Vibing off what I see in there. Love that. I got the plants and shit over here too, bro. I got all my motherfucking vegetation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, see, I'm scared to put a plant in here. I turn mine. I got all studio equipment, my couch, in case I want to go to sleep. Yeah. The refrigerator smart, over there. Sleep you know, the, the booth over there, and 
office table. And so it's like Hello? inspiration is all these records. I make sure I have records everywhere. Yeah. Well, I can just... All my records right over here behind me, bro. I always need them. All my CDs right over here. I got the guys. Hey, CDs. Hey, you like me, but hey, look. I got, I got, I got so many. Put like this. I don't even know nobody got CDs. I still have CDs with no scratches on them. That was, I'm that guy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 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 Yeah, very fragile, and they're not as big, and they're like they're yep. cost effective. But it'd be like that. It'd be like that. Sweet, yo. Well, Doc Low, man, it's been great hearing your story, hearing about you as a solo individual in your life, as an artist, forming FM Records, working with Lab, the Amityville. What's to come? It's been very good. Uh, unless you got anything you want to add, I have my final question. Um, nah, you know it's. That's pretty much it, though. I'm, I'm, you know, glad you interviewed me. I, I was waiting, so I said, damn, what the hell? And, oh, I, I do got one question. Yeah. When is the next project? Ooh. Oh, from, from me? When's the next Rhyme Beat project? Mm. You, you don't remember that message I sent you? I said, let me know when you're doing the next yeah, da-da-da. Yeah, bro. I'm not going to front. I'm, I, I dropped that late April, so now it's still, like, within, you know, a month and a half. I'm kind of, like, yeah. I'm an old school Cat, when it comes to album rollouts, like I remember artists yep. drop an album, you could play it for three years and still fuck with it. I, I ain't gonna say it <clears> that long at all, but I know I got album two written down. I got a piece of paper right here. This is album two. It's it's on my mind, yo. It's on my mind for yep. sure. So all we got, you know, hey, all you gotta do is message and say, yo, Doc, come in, let's, and I'll go to work. Just there we go. Yeah. I, I don't care where you. Hey, you, I'll go to you. I'll go to bring it. Whatever. I I, I like to work. That's hey, my thing. Yeah. I like to work. All I want is the most elite A plus. Let's put on for the state raps. Anyone listening, that's 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 what we're looking for for the next project. So beats, raps, vocals, show this. We want people to stand up for us. Exactly. It's like rights. Stand up for us. Exactly. Take take some pride in this area, yo. Even, even and what take some pride in where you live. Exactly. Even if you don't feel it, hey, you'll feel it eventually. You're gonna have to respect it. They're gonna have to. That's what I always say in my that's shit. You're gonna have to respect it. You're gonna have to. When it comes to that. You have to make people respect it. You just have to. I mean, I, I, we, I, you know, I, I don't have like an ego about it, but I demand. No, it's not an ego understand. thing. It's, it's just, it's like you know, you got to go to work every day. Exactly. You know, you got to go to work. So that's true. Yo, I like the way you put that. Like, it's just something that's, it's like breathing the air. It's second nature. Mm. Hell yeah. Some people, some people rather put you on hold. Mm. Mm. But if you're not on hold, and you know that you can do what you want, and I like makes that. a big difference. I like so that. I like I like to live my life not on hold anymore. Mm. I like to be on go. I like to be on go. And I'm and, me, and that's another thing with me and Lab. It, it's hard for us. To, we just getting out there shell. We don't like to be seen. We like Ninja Turtles. We like to be in the shadows. That's another reason why our music is like. And them sewers. Because I don't know why, but that's just like they used to say I was shy. I guess, mm -hmm. but it's not that now. It's not. Uh. Uh. I got, you know, I, I got stuff to say to talk about. Before I didn't say it, now I have no choice but to say it. Because if that, I yo. don't say it, they're going to say, why are you doing it if you're not going to say it? Mm. For real, for real, man. That's true. That's true. So, Hell yeah. I got my last question for you, Doc Low, if you're down. I asked this question to everybody, just like the first one that I start the interview with. So uh, let's get it. Where will Doc Low be one year from now? One year from now? Know it. Sitting right here in the studio. Cooking. Cooking. Right here. Why 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 should I go anywhere else to cook? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Exactly. I tried that and guess what happened? It didn't work. It got broke. I winded right back in the kitchen. I winded right back up in the kitchen. Bet. Oh man. So it's nothing to go somewhere else or or the thought of, hey, uh, what if you get a deal, a contract? I ain't worried about none of that. I ain't focusing my life on getting no deal or no contract because I got a lot invested in myself, heart wise, money wise, energy wise. So I'm just ready for whatever. Mm. And no one I'm, can take that I'm away just ready for you. whatever. If you, when you have that trust in self, no one can take that away. That's the most beautiful thing. No, no. Nah, nah. unless, you, unless you let somebody take it. That's also true. And people exactly. try to take it from you just to see. That's a good point, too. I got that X, Doc X. 
that, <laughs> that Professor X, that too. I ain't got no hair. I'm bald headed. So here we go. Um, it's I got so many ideas and things that like you know, it's hard that. for me not to do what I do. That's why it's just hard for me not to. You gotta be you at the end of the day. There's only one of you, man. And I don't mind giving some of this. I don't mind giving us information. Mm. I don't mind giving some of this. That's the way to look at it. Because you can learn something. You, gotta you can learn something from anything. Exactly. A lot of the best things I do in my life, I might have been taught from somebody else. So who am I not to share information with others, you know? Yep. Hell yeah. Well, that's all I have for questions, yo, Doc Low. Again, the Amityville EP. I appreciate now. you. FM Records, tap in. And uh, I'll be talking. More to come. More to come. More artists. More from Maine. There we go. Maine got something to say. We really do. You already know, yo. We really got something to say. We do. Oh, yeah. My album. Yeah, I'm going to plug my album. Man got something to say. Volume. I know. What you doing? <laughs> I'm just unselfish. I'm about boosting everybody else. I hey, I pre- hey, hey, I appreciate I appreciate you too, sir. All right, yo. Great talking with you. You have a good night. Be Salute. Safe. Keep cooking, man. Hey, I stay in the kitchen whipping up. Hey. Get naked hot. There we go, yo. So, there we peace. go. All right, much love, my friend. Peace out.